Have you ever considered genetic testing and wondered what the pros and cons for doing it are? Well, in today's video, we're going to talk about the purpose of genetic testing, what you'll learn from it, and the pros and cons. If you haven't met me before, I'm Dr. Janelle Sinclair, and on this YouTube ch channel, we discuss natural strategies for depression and anxiety, so subscribe if you haven't already. This video is part two in a series called Genetic Testing and Mental Health, so check out um, my other videos on that topic if you're interested. So the first question I think we need to ask is, why do genetic testing? Well, there's two main reasons. Firstly, understanding your ancestry in greater detail. And secondly, for health reasons. So when it comes to health, either, either you can use it as a preventative. So you may just be really proactive with your health and want to prevent um, illness in, in the future. Or there may be an increased risk for a particular condition that seems to run in your family. The main reason that I've used it with clients in the past was to help understand and treat a health condition such as depression, bipolar disorder or chronic fatigue. So what can we learn from a genetic test? Well firstly we can find genetic weaknesses that we have. This is truly um, unique individualised medicine. So, but the purpose of finding these genetic weaknesses is not just to go, ah, oh, I've got a genetic weakness or a mutation, but it's so that we can compensate for them with our lifestyle choices, our diet and our supplements. This is meant to be empowering. So we may choose to concentrate on certain lifestyle choices. So if you have a genetic vulnerability in vitamin D, you'll want to go out in the sunlight more. Maybe you have genetic weaknesses in the area of liver detox or the APOE um, gene or methylation. Then you realize that, hey, concentrating on um, reducing my toxins is really important for me. Also, maybe if you, you get um, high-risk genes on, on celiac disease, um, you'll want to go gluten-free or at least um, monitor regularly by blood test to see if, if you've got that condition. Um, maybe using the omega-3 SNPs, we might show that your body's just not really very good at making the higher, longer chain um, omega-3s like EPA and DHA, the ones that are important for inflammation, anti-inflammation really, and um, also brain health. So that will kind of urge you to eat more fish, or maybe it will suggest that you should avoid a vegan diet because vegan diets don't have those long chain um, EPA and DHA molecules in them and you can only get it from fish and, and other um, meat products really. Um, the, what you can learn is also what supplements that you need that are, are unique to your body and so you may again choose to take an omega-3 supplement, maybe some methylfolate to help with methylation or if you've found that you've got a number of um, infl inflammation genes that are, are weak, you may take sulforaphane, which is a broccoli cell extract that actually turns on all the anti-inflammatory um, genes in your body. Another interesting part about genetic testing, and, and a little bit of a, a mind trip I, I think really, is that we can identify weaknesses in the methylation pathways and therefore um, show epigenetic weaknesses. So epigenetics um, wants to turn down the bad genes and turn up the good genes. But genetic testing can actually help us identify if uh, inherently, genetically, we're, we're a bit poor at these epigenetic um, processes in the body. So if we find out you've got weaknesses in those pathways, you might choose to eat more folate and B12 rich foods, maybe take some supplements, methylfolate or B12, and, and as I suggested in the first video in this series, maybe reduce um, the toxins in your environment too. 
Lastly, I think what we can learn from this genetic test is it may provide some understanding for your present health conditions. So when it comes to mental health, so depression or anxiety uh, or bipolar, uh, maybe it runs in your family, it may show you particular genes that for you and your family you're vulnerable in and then we can compensate for them using our lifestyle um, and our diet and our supplements too. Maybe you've had a lot of problems with infertility or autoimmune conditions and by identifying these certain genetic weaknesses we know which area we, we may need to compensate for. So let's now go over the pros and cons of genetic testing. So firstly, the a pro is that we can identify genetic weaknesses and and we've just discussed that. So it really can be really over empowering and helpful for health conditions. The cons of genetic testing is that they cannot tell us about the expression of our genes. It just it just tells us of the blueprint, not if, if they're expressing and the impacts that our lifestyle is having on our gene expression. Another pro is this is a really exciting field and with so much promise. But on the flip side of that, it's in its infancy. So there are some differing views between experts. So um, just, just keep that in mind that it's still pretty novel. We're still learning a lot. Another pro for genetic testing is that it can be really empowering and life-changing. And I hope that the way that I've presented this video, that feels that way to you. But on the other side, some people can interpret the genetic um, information really negatively. I have a mutation, and this mutation is the cause of my disease, and I can't do anything about it. And hopefully you've learned not to look at it that way today. Also, genetic testing is very, very interesting. But on the other hand, it can be really overwhelming because of the amount of information that's out there at the moment. And there's lots and lots of different SNPs available to be tested. And this, again, is very interesting, but um, it can be um, yeah, overwhelming. But also be careful when it comes to um, the SNPs because um, not all SNPs have research behind them. So a lot of the genetic testing companies that will kind of give you um, information on 70 to 100 different um, genes um, will have done their research and, and know which genes are the ones that has research behind it and which ones can be modifiable. So which genes, if there's a weakness in that, um, they know that you can actually do something about it from a lifestyle perspective to compensate for it. Because we don't really want to know about genes that we can't do anything about because that's very disempowering, I think. So also keep in mind that our knowledge is limited and some SNPs that increase disease haven't been discovered yet. Okay, so um, you might not find any, well you usually will find something interesting when you do genetic testing, but we don't have all the answers right now, so keep that in mind. Make sure you check out my other videos on genetics and mental health and Hope you enjoyed it and if you've got any questions put them down in the comment sections below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.